everyone. Guess what? I'm gonna show you my sewing room. Now, listen, it's not extensive. It's, be it ever so humble, there's no place like your sewing room, right? We live in a cozy townhouse outside of Washington, D.C. I turned our dining room into my sewing studio. And I'll tell you why I like that. Then I'm right there where everyone else is. I didn't want to be, our house is very vertical and I didn't want to be sort of sequestered upstairs or downstairs. Um, I just prefer to be near, near the action. So I'm going to show you what it would be like to come into my house and exactly what you would see. My outfit is nothing to write home about. I made this knit top. I can't find the pattern, but I will put up the pattern numbers. They're both new look. They're not from the same pattern. The top is ill-fitting, terrible fabric. And I did not know what the heck I was doing with my embroidery function. I embroidered on a knit not good. So why do I wear it? Yeah, because I made it. Let's go in. If you want to come to my house, this is what you would see when you walk in. So right, right over here is my living room. Here is Command Central. This is where I sit like an old granny, su surrounded by patterns. Do you see them? This is a few. Um, got a new Hobby Lobby bag. Oh yeah, there's fabric in there. There's patterns in there. We're going to make our way. You can see that you're looking into my studio and you see it right from the foyer. So anyone who comes in is just going to know that someone in this house sews. I will just do a quick little clockwise tour. Down here, I have my interfacings. In this bag, I have my one sewing book, which is the uh, Reader's Digest guide to sewing. Anna gave me how to make sewing patterns, which sounds very ambitious. She gave me that for Christmas. I have a couple notes and then I have my sewing machine instructions and my serger instructions. So those are just kind of in a bag down there. Not ideal, but there you have it. So, of course, we have to have our ironing board right there. I've tucked it against this wall so that you do not see it when you walk in the door. A little artwork from Ikea hanging on the wall there. She looks pretty stylish. And I just glued one of my labels on. A cheapy little $10 iron from Walmart. Love it never burned me. This little tree of lights is helpful for making the whole room a lot brighter. So I usually point them to the ceiling and turn those on when I need light. Here is my hook. This is where I hang everything when I have finished sewing it. Over here we have my there's the ugly cords down there. It'd be nice to camouflage those. This is a great little uh, organization station. On top of it are all of my pressing tools. And they're right there, level with the ironing board. Very convenient. We have a ham. We have a sleeve board. We have a lint roller two kinds of spray starch, 
For my pressing cloths, I use men's handkerchiefs from Walmart. Now I know that um, Silk Organza is a wonderful pressing cloth. Haven't gotten to it yet. Here's my clapper and my chopstick. I love my chopstick for pushing out points and making seams lie flat to press them. Use my chopstick all the time. In my little drawers, these drawers are great. The top two are thread. Then we have just a hodgepodge of sewing uh, notions, really. We have steam a seam and all kinds of needles. I have elastic thread in here, which I've never used. I have wonder tape, which I love. This is new. This is called iron cleaner. To scrub the iron plate, the sole plate on your iron. And then I picked up this nifty little storage compartment, but I have not filled it. I have not filled it. Oh, look, there's the zipper foot for my featherweight. I will be showing you all of my beloved vintage machines. This is buttons, lots of buttons. Now see, these drawers just come right out. I can take them out and rifle through my 2,000 buttons. Look how cute those are from Hobby Lobby. Love those. Did organize a few in a container right here. And you'll see some hook and eyes in there too. Mostly buttons. Zippers, bindings. I love finishing necklines and armholes with bias binding. And I'm not too proud to say I buy it. I should make my own and that's something that I will explore doing. Elastics. Down here we're getting into uh, trims, okay? And Hobby Lobby kept putting their fold-over elastic and pretty trims on half price. I brought a bunch home. There's my mom's pin cushion. I don't use it, but oh, I keep it. Uh, here's more trims and more fold-over elastic piece of Velcro I'm hanging on to way down here uh, instructions and feet for my Kenmore machine machines and an extra pressing cloth buttonhole foot for Kenmore some cheap old thread that I'll pitch that is basically the ironing station in all its glory, and my little hook for my Kia that you can just press flat against the wall. Well, turning slowly, slowly, we come upon the fabric. I keep it in these glass towers, and then I can see all of it. I love seeing it. So here, this tower has all knits all the way down. There's my tripod, cheap. $17 from Amazon, you can't beat it. Uh, this tower has chiffons and slinky stuff on the first shelf. Knits, 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 going down into wovens. Third shelf, all wovens. All 
cloves in here. And fourth shelf, all wovens. So you can see I'm partial to wovens. All right, let's look on top of these towers. We have my pink silk lily, my laugh sign, a little painting Candace did in middle school. Here I have a bunch of notes that I'll show you. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, this is actually all of my fabric purchases. Oh, there's one with a swatch, what do you know? I keep them together. I try to make little notes on them so that I can see what I liked and see what I might not have liked so much. Um, believe it or not, I do access this quite a bit. And I'm starting a new one for my most recent purchases. Uh, here are some notes. Let's see, I have Connie Crawford's Industry Guide to Sewing Order. Oh, I love this. This can be found online, and it's a PDF, so you can print it. Um, oh, yeah. I made some little notes about, is buying fabric a disorder? And I thought I might share those notes with you sometime. And then in these little books, I have just random things written down. These are little McCall's journals, and they are just so cute. Those are blank journals, and you can keep all kinds of notes in them. And apparently, recipes. So that's on top of the third tower, and then on top of this tower, in this beautiful bowl, I like to toss my patterns for the month as I'm done making them. So when I finish a garment, I toss the pattern up there and then I have them easily accessible for my reviews at the end of the month. This little aisle here, okay, between my fabric towers and my work table. Hiding under here are two boxes. One of them says sizable leftover cuts and then the little basket one is just for miscellaneous scraps and I think that I tossed in some beautiful trims that I bought. Look at that. Oh, so pretty. Um, and then I just have a couple little scraps of fabric. So that one will tend to fill up and then I empty it into the trash because those are just little tiny pieces. Great big pieces go in here and my woven leftovers I give to my sister who quilts. Here are my patterns. Now, my pattern storage system is going to be anathema to many of you because it's so broad. It basically divides into what I've sewn and what I haven't. Because you might recall that I have given myself a 10 year goal to sew all of these patterns. When I sew at least one view on a pattern, it gets moved to a sewn box. The rest of these, we have two boxes for knits. We have new, current day, <laughs> new, new, uh, what's that one? Current day, current day. That's just a way of saying brand new patterns. I do have one in there for my vintage. And I'll, t I'll tell you what I love about my sewing pattern boxes in a minute. This over here is not so 
lovely. It's just a box that I have been able to fit my big designer Vogue patterns into and my men's patterns. So those are the men's patterns. Don't have a whole lot of those. All right, we'll back out of this little aisle and come upon my work table. I keep this area of my work table clear so that I can lay out things that I'm working on and pin them and mark them and whatever. These are the things that stay on my table no matter what. I like a lot of scissors. I love my rulers. I, have, I use these all the time. I have my little bobbins. I have a flashlight. I have this nifty little um, sewing needle keeper there. What's in here? Measuring tape, safety pins, and seam ripper. I have three kinds of pins, always at my disposal. Regular old metal pins. I call these my white magical pins. They're long, they're from 1995, and I just love them. They penetrate anything, they're sharp, and they're super long. These I bought more recently, my colored tops, and I don't use them as often, but they're easy to grasp. I like these out at all times. This little silk bouquet I call my needle tree, and it is full of my hand sewing needles. They stick right in the flowers, some of them have some thread in them, a lot of them don't, and I just stick them in there and I know where needles are at all times. Needle tree. Behind the needle tree is my junk box. It also sits directly behind my sewing machine. And yes, it's there at all times. I have to have it. It's got some sewing machine parts, it's got my one Leatherman knockoff, my marking pens, my Triflow oil. It's got a, well, you can see, it's just got a bunch of junk, and yet I need a, I need this junk. There's my labels, tons of screwdrivers, um, seam gauges. Here's my new zipper foot. Here's some notes. <laughs> and would you believe I access these notes all the time to wit when i am putting in a zipper i have to look at this and say no presser foot on the zipper teeth and then i have to remind myself what it means to break stitching at small dots and then margaret islander her great quote on the bottom of your sewing machine, you want the longest, the slipperiest, the stretchiest, the most difficult to handle. Let the feed dogs help you. And then I jotted down how to do a rolled hem on the serger, which I have yet to try. Well, I like that little sheaf of notes. I gotta keep it handy to look at it. Okay, that's my junk box. It is directly behind my machine. Here's something I am inordinately fussy about. I cannot have anything to the left of my machine. If I even have like scissors and my pins that ended up there, I will become extremely cranky because as my things come off of the, of the machine, they get all bollocked up in whatever is sitting over here. So this stays blank, completely clear. My machine, I think I told you, is a Brother Simplicity SB3129, my very first computerized machine ever. I like it. I do not think I love it, but I like it. And boy, it can do so many things. And I love the little scissor cut. Um, but yeah, there are some things about it that really bug me. 
Uh, to the right of my machine, this is non-negotiable. Must have a file. Why do I have an emery board? Because the thread will often get caught on the little edge right there. See that? So I take that emery board and file down the plastic so that my thread won't get hitched up and stop what I'm doing. Seam ripper, of course. Tweezers, of course. Pin receptacle and scissors. These five items do not move. You saw my bobbins, my flashlight, my needle holder. Um, sitting here on this little corner will usually just be some patterns and stuff, but I often move them because I'm coming around the bend to my serger, which stays set up right here. It is a brother, you know, 1034D, solid little machine, nothing but praise. To the right of this machine at all times, you will find the tweezers, cleaning brushes, and scissors. Down there, cords, bunch of cords. Over here. These are where my projects that I am actively going to sew wait. So you'll see my jacket that I already showed you and some of the dresses down there and the fabrics. Underneath, there are my sewn boxes. And all of those patterns in there have been sewn. I don't get rid of the patterns because I might wanna go back and sew them again or try another view. And over here is my music station. Occasionally I listen to music, not all the time. Up here is my zig that Candace drew for me. At some point I will introduce you to him. He is the cat of my entire existence. I've had many cats. This one is, he is king. He is absolute king. Okay, we've got a little artwork up there. We'll do another overview of everything. Now, you might be asking, well, where do you cut things out? And I'm going to show you. Now we'll look back here toward the living room and the big bay window. If I'm going to cut something out, I come right through these doors into the kitchen. And this table is wonderful. It folds up to be a perfectly round table and we will keep it like that. But then when I'm going to cut something out, this big leaf here pops out and it just makes a great, great, great cutting table. I can walk all the way around it, and I love it. So that is in very close proximity to my sewing room. All right, now I'm gonna insert a clip here of how, <laughs> how I use those pattern boxes and why I need them to be portable. So hold on. Un moment. Okay, here's why I love the portability of my pattern cases. I bring them over to my chair and then I put them in my lap. And I'm all stacked up down here. Oh, I'll bring a whole bunch over at once. And then I start going through and oh my, I have Here's a typical offering. I would have New Look mixed in with Vogue, mixed in with Simplicity, mixed in with Butterick, and pants with tops, with dresses, you name it. Now, I like the disorganization because then I stumble across things and I'm like, what? I didn't know I had that that. 
So, I go through these. And when I'm done with one, I pick up the next one. I love it. I'm in these pattern boxes all the time. So I, I know what's in them, but then I come across surprises. That is why, <laughs> that's why I want them to be portable. The other thing is when I pull out a pattern and I think, oh, okay, I like to get out the instructions and I read patterns now like I used to read cookbooks. I can't get enough. I am just constantly going through these wonderful cases and pulling out patterns that make me so gosh darn happy. So there you have it. There's one more thing I want to show you guys before we leave. Look at these flowers from Lidl. Do you have Lidl? Well, it is just now my favorite grocery store on the planet. And I pick up, it's very far away. I have to drive a long way to get there, but I do it because, well, look at these flowers. This bouquet was $10. And I just, they make me so happy and they last more than a week. So I'm putting in a plug for Lidl. I don't work for them. I don't even know anybody who works for them, but my goodness, their flowers are gorgeous. They have a bakery that can't be beat. Anyway, this is a sewing video. We'll give one last shot of the studio. And thank you guys for joining me, for being interested, and for being your wonderful, wonderful selves. I will catch you. Well, I'm leaving next week for Naples, Florida, so I will catch you the following week. Love to all of you. Bye.